What's going on everybody, it's Delmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to continue with the Interaction SDK. Specifically, I'm going to be showing you how we can set up different rigs. One of the rigs is going to be to support controllers. Another rig is going to be to support actual hand tracking. And I'm also going to show you how you can do synthetic hands by using controllers so that you can actually render hands when you're doing controller interactions. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. All right guys, so I'm gonna start by showing you where we left off on the previous video. So you guys can see this is the scene where I'm rendering my hands. I am showing every single join on my fingers and I also have where the pose is valid by using a sphere and also a line render and also a lot of information that is rendering. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to be looking for the Oculus and if you look at interaction, then we're gonna be finding the Oculus interaction sample rig. There's also one for bug button, one for button menu. So there's multiple examples in there that you can use. So I'm gonna be placing it maybe right here on the very bottom, we can move it up. And then this, this is gonna be basically an object for all the different interactables. So if we were to look at this, we can actually disable the actual room environment and then go ahead and double click on this component. And you're gonna see that this has all the different, you know, type of controllers available in Oculus. So we have the MetaQuest 2 controller. We also have the, the actual MetaQuest 1 and then also the, the hands that are currently available. So this will handle all the logic to toggle between those. So if we go ahead and enable the room environment back and I'm gonna focus on the actual table here. We're gonna be placing an object and I'm gonna show you how easy this is gonna be. So if we go into Oculus and then interactions, there's gonna be two folders that I want you to focus on that we're gonna be using for a lot of these tutorials. One of them is gonna be runtime and one of them is gonna be for samples. Runtime is gonna be components that are going to be core to the features that we're going to be going through and samples are gonna be things that Oculus is just demoing like different interactables that we can do, like a key, like a box, like a doll that they have in their demos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and expand the samples. And if we go here, there's gonna be a folder called props under objects. Then we're gonna go into the big red button and I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop that into the interactables. So let me go ahead and do that, make sure that it is in there. And if you notice, it's gonna be by default, it's gonna put it on the, on the left. I'm gonna be moving it maybe closer to us because the hands are gonna be starting around this area here where my mouse is. So the button is going to be right on the left. And if you expand that, you're gonna see that this has a button. There's also a few indicators in here. There's a surface component. There's also this component in here that is gonna allow us to determine when the hover is gonna happen, when basically different actions are going to be triggered. So if we do this right now without really doing much, this is gonna work. But before we do that, I wanna, wanna show you some components in here that are gonna be helpful. Obviously, there's gonna be, by default on this rig, there's gonna be a couple interactors that are available out of the box. So if we go ahead and expand it, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expand the input of VR, and you're gonna see that we have a controllers, and we also have a hands. For the left controller and the right controller, we have the interactors. Uh, game objects that are gonna have the interactors inside, but for hands, that is, which is what I wanna focus more on today, I'm also gonna show you the controller part, but there is also a poke interactor on the, on this, on the left hand, and also on the right hand, you're gonna see that if we go on the hand interactors right, there's gonna be a poke interactor. So this by default has poke interactors already available. And what I wanna show you here, if we go into the actual button, you're gonna see that this has the interactable, the, the component that we're going to be interacting with needs an interactable. In this case, it's gonna be poke. And then it also has an interactable Unity event wrapper, which by default is going to allow you to basically hook into the life cycle and, and the actions that get executed from some of the interactables. So if you notice, there's a select and there's an unselect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop the debug area here. And actually on this one, I'm gonna add a new, I don't want to remove the audio because I wanna play the audio and I wanna stop the audio. So I'm just gonna add a new event. This one just wasn't bound to anything, so I just reuse it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and log some info here. We can say this is button and the event that we are going to be activating, executing, it's going to print this messaging here. So we can say execute it. 
And then on this one, I'll do the exact same thing, which is to logger and then log info. And then except, oh, except this is gonna be on select. And there's other ones in here, like when we are going to start hovering. So we could do the hover as well. And then on hover, so we'll just do the same thing here. I'll just drag and drop this, drag and drop this, and then go into my, my logger and then do the same thing on this one, go into my logger. And then in this one, I'm just gonna say, this is gonna be hover. I'll just copy this, paste it here. And then this is gonna be on hover. If you notice, there's gonna be a max distance in here and also an enter hover distance. So if I were to move some of these values, you're gonna see that there's gonna be a gizmo that gets changed. So I'm gonna leave that those alone, but those so you know when this action is going to get executed, it's, it's when it reaches those limits. So right now I'm using my hand, right? I can go ahead and try to push it. And you're gonna see that as soon as I'm hovering, and on hover, I'm not even pushing it through, but if you look at the log, it's doing the hover. But if I push it all the way down, you're gonna see a select, and then I'll select as soon as I let go. I can do that with you know either hand. So what if we wanted to do that with my controllers, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just, just grab the right controller. We can also grab the left controller. And you're gonna see that this is going to activate automatically, which is the beauty. There's also a couple indicators in here, and those white balls, that means that that's going to be the actual poke object. So if you go in here, you're gonna see that if I do it with the, this part of the controller, it's gonna go through. What if we wanted to clone this and we can clone it and make a larger button, right? So in this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and we can just rename this and this is gonna be a big Y button. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and expand this. This has a really cool material associated with this. I'm not gonna create a really cool material. I'm just gonna go ahead and just grab a, a default material that I'm using. And then it's just gonna be Y, right? Very simple. Also, there's an interactable debug visual which allows you to change the color depending on the state so you know that, that it's going to be available. But if you look at this component here, like the button, this is gonna be the mesh here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go into 2D here. And we're gonna be, maybe I'll just make it maybe around twice the size of that. I think that works. But if you look at it, there's a little thing, a little indicator gizmo, right? Which is this one right here. We need to make that, that one go up. So I'm gonna make it right about there and then I'll just move these down. So that, that because that's gonna be where the, the actual press, the poke it's going to occur. So we can do something, I think something like that works. And the idea though is that we have kind of like, you know, the same, the same level where we're gonna be touching touching that button, so I think that works. There's also a surface component that is gonna allow us to know, okay, at what point we're going to be on the surface, and you can kind of see that it is sitting at the button, at the bottom of the button. So we have that, we also have a proximity field that allows you to determine within a radius when we're going to be executing, executing an action. So in this case, this is set to 0 0.05, I think I'm just gonna leave it as that. And in this case, I'm gonna use my hands as well. And you can kind of see, let me see, so I can press this one, press this one. You can also see that, you know, the, the actions are getting executed. I can go back in later and change this from giving it a, a more defined name, like white button instead of just button, so we know which one it's executing it. But this works, right? Everything works. I can go down here. And we have a little issue though, like I have to go, kind of like go through the button to be able to press it. Let me change that. And the reason for that is because I didn't change uh, a property in here. So if we go here, you can see that the the distance of this indicator, it's, uh, I think it's too low. So we need to make it, maybe we can do something like 0.9. No, let's do, I think, yeah, I think that works. Let's do 0 0.12, 0 0.12. Okay, so we have these. Let's see if it's going to work. Okay, so now this is more realistic. It's it doesn't go, I don't have to go through the button to be able to press it. Okay, so now if we want to add objects to be able to grab them, what I'm gonna do though, it's I'm gonna go into, like I say, Oculus, there's gonna be the two folders, any objects that we're gonna be grabbing and reusing are gonna be under the samples, objects. And what I'm gonna do on this one is, I really like the mock, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it right around here. We can just adjust it, get closer, and make sure that it is positioned correctly. And then normally I, I want to place the cup around, you know, the position, the rotation that we're gonna be grabbing it on. 
So I'm gonna, you're gonna, I'm gonna put it just like that and then we can drag it and drop it here. And then I'm also going to do, let's grab a key. I think the key is also cool. I'm gonna rotate the key to be about, I think 90 degrees is what I did before. And I'll drag it and drop it here as well. And I think we can do, we can just move it a little bit and then, yeah, move it a little bit there. So a few things about these, these are, these are already pre-set up with uh, interactables. So if you notice, if I were to select some of these ones, this is gonna have already the different points that have been pre-recorded for, for this mug. So you can grab it that way. Basically, it'll, it uses limits to be able to know, you know, how to snap the, the actual hand to the cup. And then there's also mirror versions of it. And then if you go into the key, you're gonna see that, that it's very similar. There's, there's actually, in this case, there's also just two of them. One for the, uh, one, uh, in this case, this one is going to be for the right hand. And then this one's gonna be for the left hand. So I'll cover how to create some of these ones in future videos for this series. For now, I just know that those are just going to work. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I know this is not gonna work, but I wanna show you that it's not gonna work if I try to grab those items. So if I were to grab this, nothing is gonna work. In fact, that is rendering, and I'll show you why that is rendering. But I can do this, but I cannot interact with these subjects. And the reason for that is because we don't have any actual interactors that are going to allow us to do that. And if you don't want these to render, just make sure you don't have that object selected, otherwise it's gonna render. Okay, so how do we fix this so that we can actually grab those items? So I'm gonna do, let's do this. I'm gonna just do focus on hands, and I'm just gonna do one on the right controller so that you know that it should work with both. In fact, I'm actually gonna do it just for hands and then we can do the controllers in with the next rig. Okay, so what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna go ahead and collapse the samples. We're gonna focus on runtime things now, go into prefabs, and I'm gonna focus on this hand grab component. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it into my hand interactors left. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the hand interactors right. And then I'm gonna follow this pattern that you, they always end with the left or right. And then in this case, I'm gonna do the same thing. It's gonna be right. And if you go in here into the prone object, you're gonna see this only knows about the poke. Well, I want to make sure that I add the actual the grab interactor. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the right hand. Let's add one more interactor. And I'm gonna drag it and drop it. And if we go in here, there's gonna be multiple components in here that you can look at that we're going to also have to change, but let's just keep it simple for now. And I'll show you in a minute what we can do to make it better. Okay, so I can still, I can still push this. Maybe not, maybe yes. Okay, so it looks like I have an error. And yes, I do have an error. Let me see why I have an error. Okay, so I know what I miss. And this is perfect. This is, we want this to happen, right? Okay, so this is not gonna work because you haven't really associated which hand this is gonna work with. And it's not gonna be this, because this is the interactor, it's gonna be the actual hand. So this needs a reference to the hand ref. So make sure that you associate that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the right hand. So now if we go back, things should work as you should expect. Let's try that again. And like I said, these are great, because if you have the same issues, then you know that that's going to work. So, so this works, kind of work. I mean, that's not really how I grab a cup because my fingers are through it, but I can grab it, right? Like if your experience doesn't really care about being perfect, then this could work, right? Like I can grab it, like maybe I can grab it from here. I mean, I can grab it, but it doesn't really snaps properly, but that is progress, right? So how can we make it better so that things is not properly. So one thing that I'm gonna do before we keep going is I'm gonna go in here. And if you look at this, there's gonna be a pointable Unity event wrapper. I wanna show you that we can also tag basically into those events. I'm gonna go ahead and go into my debug area and then logger and then log info. And I thought I had that in my clipboard, but that's okay. So this one's gonna be the mug. So I'm gonna say mug move and then execute it so that I can keep everything consistent. And then if you wanna, you know, tap into some of these ones, you can. I'm just gonna do the move so that you guys see some changes as I'm moving. And then I'll do the same thing here. I'm a visual person, so I like to know when things are happening and why are they happening. So this one is gonna be for the key. Okay, so that should be printed whenever we're moving those objects. But what I wanted to do though, is I wanted to fix this so that we could see the, the actual hand is napping to the pose and the hand points 
that I was showing you on these objects. Basically what's gonna happen is I want it to snap like that, in, depending on which, you know, which one of these ones get, get assigned and depending on, you know, where my hand is in regards to the cup. So to do that, I'm not gonna modify this. I'm just gonna show you a different rake that has a lot more functionality already built. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do search for full and then synthetic, I think it's what it's called, yep. And I'm gonna drag it and drop it in here. And you can modify the other one and make it work. This is, this is the way that I found it to be a lot easier because this already has a lot of the synthetic, the synthetic hands that we're going to need. So if you go into these components in here, we're gonna go into the, let's focus on hands again. I'm gonna go left hand and right hand. In this case, I think I'm going to actually do it on both so you guys can see how this is gonna work. It's gonna take me some time to, to do it all, but that's okay, just, just hang in there. We're going to be doing them all. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and modify the poke because this rake doesn't really have the poke interactions. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop this into the poke in here. I'm gonna do it right on the, on the right hand side. I'm also going to do it on left and right hands. So I'm gonna go ahead and go here into left and then do the same thing into this one. And I know from experience that this is not gonna work to start, but we'll fix it as we, as we work together with this. This is gonna be for the right hand, and then I'm going to do this for the left. And then this rig gets really cool because it, the controllers are actually not these real controllers. It's actually going to render my hand when I'm using the controller, but it's going to, it's going to work with the controller. Okay, so now what I need to do, I need to do the same thing for the grab. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop the grab into all of those components. In fact, I'm just gonna copy these, paste it here, and then paste it here, paste it here, and then we can just go ahead and assign the, the proper naming for this. I'm gonna do this with the right hand. I'm also going to do that with this. I should have done the copy after I rename it so that I don't have to do this every single time, but that's okay, I think this, this, this works. Okay, so a few things just to know, if you look at this one, we need to assign the proper hand because we don't want the same thing that happened last time to us. So I'm gonna do that with this. I'm also going to do that with, with this component in here. And then that with this one. Now we can go that and do that with the actual hand. And then do it with this one. And then lastly, we can do it with the right hand. So if we go in here and then associate the hand ref, and then we can associate the hand ref again. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to assign the interactors, just like I showed you before. So this one is going to be that one. And I wish this automatically do it if there was a setting to automatically find them on the child objects. I think it'll be a lot easier than me having to, to associate these ones manually. But that's okay. I think I think this is, is still pretty easy. So let's grab two in here, drag and drop that. And then we'll do the same thing on this one. And I think that should cover most of what we need. Okay, so so that's cool and all, and it's gonna allow us to grab things with the controller and also with hands. But on the hand side, it's not going to be snapping just yet correctly. And the reason for that is because we need to do one more thing that might take a little time, but that's okay. This is going to be all worth our time. So if you go into the hand grab interactor left, and I'm also going to be expanding this one because I wanna make sure that, that we're doing this correctly. And then I'm also going to be expanding the left hand synthetic, visual, and then Oculus hand. And I'll show you why that is, because we're gonna have to associate a few things in here. Okay, so these two objects under the hand grab visual, which has the, the hand grab stay, which is what we want. We wanna make sure that we have them enabled. And then on each of them, I'm gonna be assigning a synthetic hand. So I'm gonna do that on this one right here, which is gonna be for the, the actual left hand. And then on the other one, I'm gonna be doing the same thing, but I'm gonna be assigning it to the right hand. So I'm gonna do that here as well. So now that it's going to partially work, we still need to do one more thing in order for this to, to work fully. So if we go down here, I'm gonna add a component and this one is going to be the grab string indicator. This is actually going to work as you have it. I just wanna make sure that I do this because it's gonna make it look way better. So I'm gonna drag and drop that component and then the hand material for the right hand, it's going to be changing this property right here. And then I'm also going to be changing the colors in here. So it's gonna be the color when we're interacting and then the color when we're not interacting, maybe we'll just do it white. 
And then the color during hover, we, maybe we can just do like a yellow. And then what I can do is I'm gonna copy this component in here. And then I can do and apply that on the left. But except I need to make sure that I have that associated with the right components. So I'm gonna drag and drop the hand graph interactor. And then on the left hand though, I need to make sure that I do this. So I'm just gonna make sure that I have that and then it's gonna be left. And then for the right hand, I was gonna make sure that I have that associated with that and the hand mesh node where we're gonna be changing the materials is assigned to the proper hand. So we can do the same thing on the, on the controllers just to make it consistent. We can go in here and then enable this component. On this one, I'm just gonna do it on one because it's gonna to take too long just to do them all. But that, it's gonna work, work for that. And then on this one, I'll just grab uh, and grab uh, and paste a new component. And then again, this one's gonna be just that component in here. And then for the right controller hand, we make sure, make sure that we expand these, all of these components and then grab and drag and drop the hand mesh node because it has the material and the properties to be able to change the colors. And you can kind of see that on, on this hand, if I get closer, I'm getting closer and I'm seeing a yellow and that is the grab strain indicator that I just showed you. I also added it to the left hand. And then also this is snapping, I think it's snapping better. Oh yeah, there we go. It is snapping better. So you can kind of see how that grab is just perfectly aligned. And if I grab it from the top, you can kind of see it's red when I'm interacting. It is basically not, it's basically black or white when it's not interacting. And as soon as I get closer, it changes to a color, color yellow. So I really like those indicators and it works for both hands. Let's try to grab the key, same thing with the key. This one only has one grab pose, so I can only do it from one. But that's okay, I'll show you how to add more in, in a future video. So I think this is all working. So let's test on this. Let's test this and see if it works with the with the controller. So on the controller though, I did the same thing. So I, can, I should be able to poke, right? Everything is poking. And, in, in, and I'm also pressing different buttons on the controller. So if I press, you know, different buttons, it's gonna activate different actions. I can also use the controllers to basically grab the, the hand. On the right one is the one that I grabbed the indicator. I didn't do it on the left just because I wanted to save time to be honest, but everything is working. I can grab all different objects and I think this, this works super good. So let's try something else that I wanna show you last and, and then I'll wrap it up. But the last thing that I wanna show you though is the when you do any poke interactions, if you wanted to change the hover state, the, it's really easy to do it, all you really need to do is if you expand this and look at the button, you're gonna see the, the max distance in here. So if I wanted to change this to be something like 20, maybe 1.5, and then we can do the same thing on this one, and then 1.5. This is gonna have the enter hover, the hover distance that we are requiring. So you can change that and that's going to reflect on the, on the actual UI changes that we make. So that it's going to work if you wanted to change the hover. If you wanted to add more grab interactables, hand grab interactables to this, I'm gonna be covering that in another video. I did an older video and I'm gonna be linking that to the description of this video so that you guys know how to do it. But since Oculus integration have changed quite a bit, the version that I'm using is version 44 right now. I know also some of you had issues with the, the actual curved canvas and I had to make a couple changes to make it work. So make sure that you look at the repo that I'm gonna be putting in GitHub. If you guys want to you know, learn what changes and how these change, because they added a cylinder, a cylinder surface, and then the whole thing is been changing so much that I'm trying to keep up with the changes, but the easiest thing for you to do is to basically clone the repo and then look at the changes. If you wanna see a video of the curve canvas specifically with the new changes on B44 or above, let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to do a video about that. But that's everything for today, guys. Thank you very much. And make sure that you stay tuned because I'm gonna make a new video about distance grab interactions. And also I'm going to be continuing how to create and record different hand grab interactables with the hand grab points, which I covered before, but I'm gonna be updating that video for this playlist. So thank you very much, guys.